in here because this is what I want to talk about. Why? Why we're in this chapter? I almost re rewrote this chapter um, to include this little lump, but then I've had to change everything for this little lump, and I don't really want to change everything. This little lump, but so let's listen now, and then and then you don't have to fill out your piece of paper up there. What 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 does it like to feel giving? What's it like to feel giving? Why do I care? Why would it be great to calculate the electric field, Mr. Morlatos? So you know how stuff works inside of it. <laughs> what what can it tell me? What can it tell me? Like, like, like the, the voltage over a distance. They can be used to find voltage, which ultimately tells me about what? Like current and stuff? Like well, okay, but circuit stuff. We didn't even talk about that. I'm yes. a little early for that, but let's talk about that briefly. What else is voltage getting? What is voltage related to? Energy. So I'm going to get you now because we're in the electricity chapter and I'll forget. Okay. So the electric field gives me voltage by using the integral dr. Negative integral dr gives me voltage, correct? The potential difference, which also actually gives me energy, right? What else does it give me? Force. Force, right? Because force. It gives me force because I can go electric field times the charge I place in it is force, which is our very beginning definition. So if I can calculate the electric field, I can tell you the energy and the force on a particle anywhere, anytime, anyhow. So we're not going to spend a whole chapter fighting the electric field for various shapes of arrangements of charges. Now, why do I say that? Because we have up to now said, well, I can find the electric field if I got a point charge, right? That this distance would be what? Um, what are we electric field would be what at this distance? Uh, yes. F over Q. Or what are KQ. we going to be over KQ over D squared square is what we've said we were going to remember so that we can have that so we can have this for later on usage. And so we've got one for a point charge, but now we're going to play the game of we've got an arrangement of charges or lots of charges floating around. And we don't actually want to sit there and go, this one does this electric field work back to. I don't want to do this step by step for every single charge. So we're going to start off with a with a simple, there's four simple cases, and I'm going to use the word simple, and I'm going to put quotations around it because they call it simple. There's nothing simple about these cases. They're awful. They're horrible. And you have to know them because they can ask them. I used to say it was one every 10 years. Looking back more carefully, it's about one every four or three years they bring up one of these. Okay, and It's not fun. And you have to know them. The good news is there's four cases and they're specific. If you remember these four cases, you got everything they can throw at you in this particular version of the problem. Okay? The four cases are I give you a line of charge. I give you a circle of charge and I put you on the axis somewhere. Like is the circle is it like a sphere or is it's it a like circle? Circle. circle. Like around. So like around. Filled in, not filled in. Just a circle. A ring. A ring, they call it. A ring. So I should call it a ring because it'll make more sense to you. Three dimensionally, it would be coming out of the board like this, right? Coming out of the board. So the ring. Then they give you the disc. This is where it's filled in with charges. And your distance from the center perpendicular to the surface. Agreed? And then the last one is going to be, which should look very familiar if you look at the question of the week. A semicircle or some piece of a semicircle where I put the charge exactly where the center would be. We want to know the field exactly the center. So a semicircular charge. Now we're going to be get a lot of experience with these in a moment, right? I've written out the, the instructions for how to do them is written out in detail for all of these. The next four pages are this is the way you do the problem, do the problem. Do the problem. This is the way you do the problem. So I'm going to walk you through the calculus because the calculus is atrocious. And then we're going to, after we're done with these four cases, we're going to talk about Gauss's law, which works for everything else you could possibly see on the test. And Gauss's law is a wonderful thing because the math word is fun compared to what I'm about to do to you for the first four. Okay. You ready? Blaze said he was ready today, so I might pick on Blaze for the next little bit. To, to play the game, we need to start 
We're going to go ahead and start. I'm going to skip the top three. We're going to come back to it. Don't cross it out. I'm going to talk about that for a moment. It says electric field continuous charge distribution for some point is, yeah, let's not talk about that just yet. Let's let's start off by saying I've got a long stick. Are we listening? Or writing? You're listening. And um, I, I'm, we're, we're going to start by writing. See this little zone over here on the right? That's where you're going to start writing. Okay. okay just a little bit. Um, if you want to, if you want to draw it right now, would be a good thing. This is where you're going to follow along. And I've got a bunch of charge. I'm going to make them positive. It's arbitrary. It doesn't really matter. I'm going to say my charge per unit length is the same, right? So it's symmetric. Otherwise, the calculus would become awful. Is that the charge you always? Well, I could do it in lumps and then not lumps and not lumps. I write an equation for it. Not yet ready for that. Let's not do that just yet, shall we? And I've got a distance. Some distance out that far. Now I'm going to check the variables they use because there's a couple of different ways you can derive this. I want to make sure I'm using the right one. Da, 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 da. They say that this is going to be D and the length of this is L. Agreed? What is D? Oh, D is the distance between that and the spot we care about. All right. So. Why can't I use KQ over D squared, Mr. Nix? Uh, when does KQ over D squared work? When it's one charge. Is there just one charge here? No. Now you might think, well, I could just use an average, but think about it. This goes as D squared, right? The distance. Mm -hmm. So this little piece here, this little piece of charge right here, red doesn't look like red. It looks like some other color. Let's try this. That's a little better. So this little piece of charge here has got a different distance than this piece of charge here, which may have the same charge in it. Unfortunately, it's affected differently because the distances are different, right? And it says a square, so I can't just mash it together and call it an average. So it's not going to work for that. So instead, I need to figure out a way to add up all the little pieces of charge. I need to basically start here and just add up little pieces of charge as I go. Okay? So what would the formula be for a single piece of charge I find anywhere along here, Mr. Nix? KQ over D squared. So I need to, this little thing should provide a KQ over D squared. Okay? I'm going to use an R so we don't get D's confused. Is that okay with you? Yep. Wait, R as in the length of the field. This R is between the here and here, whatever that may be uh, for that particular piece, because I got a D on the board already. Plus, I'm going to have to take an integral, so I don't want DD anyway, so let's just not talk about that. So, far, so good? Yeah. So, that's what that one provides, right? If I wanted to find all the electric fields, I basically add them all up, right? So, it'd be this one plus the next one plus the next one plus the next one. Now, if I broke it up into four pieces, I'd get a, a, an estimate, would I not? What would be a better way to get the best possible estimate? To take the integral. To take the integral, Mr. Bibelet. Okay. So I should take the integral where I'm shrinking this down smaller and smaller, making each of these pieces smaller and smaller until such time as I'm infinitely small, taking the limit as I approach that, right? There are an infinite number of little pieces. So that would be the integral of all these, right? All the kq are to the negative 2. I'm going to put a negative 2 in there, white, because we're going to eventually integrate. Uh, with respect to q, now this is a problem. Because I need it in terms of r. Don't really like this. So I need to start thinking about how I'm going to capture how much q is in this little piece here. So we're going to go back. Up to the top of the page, and we're going to talk about what we call linear distributions. Linear distributions. Linear distributions are charge per unit length. So it says up there, it says linear. I want charge per unit length. Length. So just for just for the record, what would the units of that be, Peter? Uh, coulombs. Coulombs. Charge per unit length. Uh, coulombs, coulombs per meter. Love it. Coulombs per meter. Okay, so that's how many coulombs per meter. We're gonna use we're gonna use a lambda for that. A lambda. Great. Hello. It's an upside down view. 
We're running out of letters, man. We got to start using other ones. Lambda. So, if it's a charge unit length, and if I want to talk about a little bitty piece of R, then the amount of charge that would be in that little tiny piece of R would be what? It would be. Well, actually, let me back up. Let's just use the amount of charge found in that little tiny piece would be equal to what? Lambda times the little bitty bit of R, whatever that R is. This distance here? Agreed? Okay. So whatever this distance is, the distance times that would give it there. So I'm going to replace Q over here. I'm going to get rid of this expression. I'm going to replace it. I'm going to go integral. Therefore, it has to be equal to K. Q is lambda R over R times R to the negative 2. Let's go ahead and make it R to the negative 2. And now, let's, let, me, let me do this. Couldn't you just do back up. Let me, let me, hold on, hold on. So let's go, it'd be K, the electric field should be, and then we're going to have to talk about why this is not mathematically correct in just a moment, but lambda R, right, which is Q, times R to the negative 2, agreed? Yes, ma'am. It would be, except why? R's are changing, right? And it's changing the electric field. So I'm multiplying two things together that depend on each other. Do I, am I not? So I have to do what instead? <laughs> Want to multiply something times something else, or one depends on the other? What do I do? Integrate. Integrate. Want to multiply, right? So I'm going to extract this R back out. I'm going to write the electric field would therefore have to be the integral of k lambda r to the negative 2, k lambda r to the negative 2 dr. It's negative 2 because I'm extracting one of the r's out. Remember, when we did work equals force times distance, or force times x, right? And the force was x squared or something. I didn't go x to the third dx. I did x squared dx, right? I'm abstracting one. I'm integrating. I'm taking care of that variable by sliding along the r direction. Agreed? That shouldn't be a negative. I don't know what that's there. Nobody's panicking with a negative. That's so what that, I just asked. Okay, that. sorry. So yes? You're integrating with respect to the tiny r. Like I'm going to, I'm going to add up all the r's as I make the r's get smaller and smaller. Okay. I'm going to sum up an infinite number of pieces. So, yes. Okay. Okay. Where am I going to start my integral? Andrika. Like that zero, like between D and L, like right there. So that would be how far away from the place I want to find the electric field? D. So I'm going to start my integral at D. All the way to and then I'm going to end it at where? D plus L. D plus L. Congratulations. We've done our first of four. Oh. Okay. Now we still have to integrate it, right? And we'll we'll do do that. But that's how you get it set up. How do you know what that the the R you're prospecting, taking it with respect to is like the Q equals lambda R? Like how do you, how do you know that, know that Q equals dQ equals lambda dr? Um, that's the problem. That's what I need to talk about. I mean. What we're trying to do is, the problem we have is if I pick a piece here, it's too big. Because the electric field caused by the charge on this one is bigger than the electric charge over here. No matter how small I make it, unless I make it infinitely small, I'm going to run into that problem. So I know this piece, could the charge in this piece could be written as QR. But I also know this R changes my electric field. Does that make sense? And so because it changes my electric field, I have to integrate instead of just simply adding them up, which is what I really want to do. Okay. All right? I get that, yeah. Okay. If you get that, then we are way golden. Okay, so I'm going to integrate this. So we'll make, who's going to integrate this? Who's, Bernard! You want to integrate this? You got it. 
Raise the power by one. Raise the power by one. 